So the June official visits are over. That means recruiting is about to quiet down, right? No, not with, oh, I don't know, six or maybe even seven of Pitt's top targets set to announce their commitments over the next two weeks. There's a lot to talk about. And so today we're going to help you set your calendar to get ready for this next fortnight of Pitt recruiting. And we'll begin it right here on The Morning Pit on YouTube.com slash PantheLairComp. All right, it's Tuesday here on The Morning Pit, youtube.com slash pantherlair.com. I'm Chris Peak from pantherlair.com. It's the website below, panther-lair.com, pittsburgh.rivals.com. The most comprehensive source of Pitt sports news on the internet, football, basketball, and recruiting. You know the deal, and you get it all at pantherlair.com, panther-lair.com, pittsburgh.rivals.com, and message boards to interact with other Pitt fans. Hundreds and thousands of Pitt fans all day, every day, on the message boards at panther-lair.com, pittsburgh.rivals.com. You want to talk about pit sports because you are a pit fan. You want to find other pit fans to talk to about pit sports. The place to do it, the message boards, pantherlair.com. And then while you're here, before you head over there, like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. YouTube.com slash pantherlair.com is where we put all of our pit video content right here. These daily morning pit videos, our weekly live Panther Lair show. Usually every Wednesday night at 8.30 p.m. this week, it's going to be Thursday night, so we're just uh, making a quick little change there, but we'll be back to our regular Wednesday nights next week. Um, yeah, you don't want to miss any of it. So like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash pantherlaircom, and that way you will stay tuned in to everything that we do. I just got a DM yesterday morning from a regular viewer, regular listener, said, hey, where's the video? And the video had been posted for like two hours, two and a half hours, you got to turn on those notifications. If you're subscribed to the YouTube channel, you can turn on notifications. You'll get an alert sent to your phone every time we post a new video right here at youtube.com slash pantherlaircom. So like this video, subscribe, turn on notifications, do all the things that good YouTubers ask you to do, and we'll pretend for a moment that I'm a good YouTuber and you'll do what I ask you to do. All right. It's a busy calendar. All right. You thought the first three weeks, four weeks of June were busy with all the official visits and all the recruiting that was going on, but there's a busy calendar coming up here for the next two weeks as at least six and possibly seven of Pitt's top targets, leftover guys from these official visits, guys who left the official visits and either didn't commit or committed and haven't announced are going to announce their commitments here over the next two weeks. And so we're going to set out the calendar here. I should have a visual aid uh, of some sort to uh, uh, you know, kind of guide you through this. But it all starts tomorrow, June 28th. That's the first big commitment that you're going to be watching. I think it's going to be tomorrow night, probably around 7 o'clock. And it's four-star safety, Coy Beasley. Kid from Cincinnati, took his official visit, uh, I think, on the to Pitt on the first weekend of the month. He might have been the second weekend, actually. I should know that off the top of my head. He was the second weekend, actually. I apologize. Um, he's After his pit visits, he took a visit to Wisconsin and a visit to Purdue. And he's going to announce his commitment tomorrow night at a local elementary school where he has worked out a lot. I think he's going to be on Instagram Live or something like that. And uh, he'll announce between the Panthers, the Badgers, and the Boilermakers. Uh, some of these guys that we talk about here today got a pretty good feel for where they might go. Some of them we're not so sure about. There was a time when we were really confident about Coy Beasley, and that confidence has maybe waned uh, a little bit in light of his Purdue official visit. It seems like the Boilermakers did very well with Coy Beasley on that visit. Pitt obviously is very attractive for defensive backs, but they're not the only school that has done well with defensive backs. And I think when you dig into a little bit of history, you see that Purdue and new head coach Ryan Walters have done, well, Walters more than Purdue, uh, has done pretty well with defensive backs, particularly in his time at Illinois when he was a defensive coordinator. That's a tough battle to win. Now, Pitt obviously has a lot to sell. They've put a lot of guys in the NFL. They've got very good coaches and Corey Sanders and Archie Collins. Pat Narduzzi obviously has a reputation Pitt, as I say, has a lot to sell for a defensive back recruit. I'm not so sure if they're going to win this one, but we'll find out tomorrow night um, when he makes his commitment. Uh, right around 7 p.m. is the scheduled time, so we'll see if that comes to fruition. So that's the first one you got to watch for June 28th, Coy Beasley. Two days later, there are two commitments being announced. Uh, Four-star defensive end Dominic Kirks and three-star offensive lineman Maurice Schmoranzer, who I, I believe you know we affectionately refer to as Mo Schmo um, because it's easier to say. 
Uh, Moshmo, a native of Germany, he's uh, living in Roanoke, Virginia, took his official visit to Pitt this past weekend. Dominic Kirks, a four-star defensive end in Cleveland, took his first took his official visit on the first weekend of the month. Um, two guys at positions where Pitt has a, a pretty decent number of commitments. Uh, I think they, they've got four defense or four offensive linemen so far. Uh, on the defensive line, you know some of these guys could b- move back and forth, but really you've got two defensive ends, Ty Uhas and Zach Crothers, and two defensive tackles, Jasir Whittington and Francis Brew. Now, Uhas, the Central Catholic product, could potentially move inside and play tackle. I think he, I think the pit coaches see him as being good enough that he could play end or tackle, and that opens up flexibility and allows him to. I think it it creates flexibility for his career and it creates flexibility for the recruiting because they can justify taking another end or justify taking another tackle by saying, well, you could do either one of those so they can, you know, they have, they have options there. And Dominic Kirks is certainly one of those options who uh, they like, as I say, he's going to be the the first of these. uh, And and there's three or four, four star defensive ends on the list that we're going to talk about here. And uh, Kirk's is is one of them. Yeah, like I say, he took his official visit the first weekend of the month. Uh, subsequently went to Washington and Wisconsin. I think he announced the top five of Pitt, Kentucky, Nebraska, Washington, and Wisconsin. You would think the two other schools he took official visits to would be the other top schools in his options, Pitt, Washington, and Wisconsin. And you would like to... Th- you know, there's a part of me that says, with any defensive line recruit, Pitt's got the advantage because they've got Charlie Partridge. They've got... Uh, a, a pretty strong recent history of turning out uh, good defensive line prospects and sending guys to the NFL. Charlie Partridge is well regarded as one of the best, if not the best defensive line coaches in the country. And so there's sort of an automatic default of, well, there's a defensive line prospect. Pitt's probably going to get him. And I think they've got a great chance with Dominic Kirks. I don't know if they have a better chance than Wisconsin. Uh, he is in Cleveland. I think you tend to feel like uh once you get into Ohio, guys start having that Big Ten lean. You know the, those those Big Ten siren songs. Uh, they start hearing them, and and they're hard to turn down. And so I understand that. Uh, I don't know if I see him going all the way out to Washington, although he seemed to really enjoy his official visit out there. Pitt's gonna get a couple defensive ends out of this group, I think, um, that'll be committing over the next two weeks or so. Uh, Kirk's may or may not be one of them. I'm not sure, but he's definitely one of the priority targets. Uh, as far as Mo Schmo, you know, we talk about, uh, I'm sorry, Maurice, uh, Maurice Schmoranzer, um, or Schmoranzer. I, my German is very bad. It's non-existent, actually. I don't know how to speak German or pronounce German names. Um, Pitt has four offensive line recruits. I think they would really like to land Mo Schmo. Uh, they told him he could play any of the five offensive line positions. Dave Borbley likes his potential and, and uh, ceiling to play tackle guard or center. And so he's obviously, I, I think a priority Pat Narduzzi told him they were taking one more offensive line recruit in the class and they would like it to be him. Uh, Schmo, Schmo, Schmo Ranzer announced the top five, but he took four official visits and his other official visits in before Pitt were Virginia Tech, West Virginia, and Miami. The interesting thing about this kid uh, is he had announced a top two, a final two. In May, he announced a final two of Virginia Tech and Wake Forest. That was it. He was down to those two. And he took a visit, I think, to Wake Forest, an unofficial visit. And like that night, Pitt offered him. And and he went and took a visit to Virginia Tech, uh, an unofficial visit, like later in the week. I think it was early in the week when he got the pit offer. Later in the week, he was taking an unofficial visit to Virginia Tech. And he started thinking about it and said, you know, I, I might as well go up and check it out. I already announced my top two. I have my top two schools I'm focused on, final two and all that. But pit offered, maybe I'll go check it out. And so he goes up and checks it out and says, wow, I have to come back to this place. Now, I think Virginia Tech's got a, a draw. I think West Virginia has a draw for him. I think Miami is appealing. But the fact that Pitt was able to impress him so much on that unofficial visit that they got him back into town for an official visit, that he was willing to basically scrap his commitment plans. Because not only did he have a final two of Virginia Tech and Wake Forest, he had a commitment date set. And he scrapped it. 
and you know in favor of taking more official visits including one to Pitt. Pitt was the final official visit you know chance to make that last impression which I think is always a good thing uh, and something you can always kind of uh, you know hope for um, and so we'll see I like this is one that I don't have a great read on I mean Kirk and Schmorans are both I don't have a great read on where they're leaning, but I mean, I think you can make a case for both of those guys or for Pitt having a good chance with both of those guys. We'll just have to wait and see, uh, but we'll find out on Friday. So Coy Beasley on Wednesday, June 28th, Maurice Schmoranzer, uh offensive lineman and the defensive lineman, defensive end Dominic Kirks, both on Friday, June 30. All right. So that'll get you through the end of this week. And then next week, on July 3rd, what day of the week is July 3rd? I should have my calendar open. Um, no. Monday. Next Monday, July 3rd, another four-star defensive end. This time it's Elias Rudolph. Now, Elias Rudolph is a four-star defensive end from Deerfield Beach, Florida. Uh, Pitt has connections down there. Charlie Partridge has connections down there. Rudolph is a top 250 prospect. He's in number 13 weak side defensive end prospect in the country a top 40 recruit in the state of florida which is pretty high when you talk about a four-star guy is you know ranked number 37 in the state uh but like i say he's a top 250 recruit nationally he took his official visit to pit the first weekend of the month subsequently took visits to miami and michigan and has a top three of pit miami and michigan and then he's going to announce on july 3rd and here again we're in a similar situation where i'm saying this is a big time defensive line prospect Pitt has Charlie Partridge. You know, that there, there's a natural draw there and a natural appeal, I think, and a natural selling point to get defensive linemen to come to Pitt. Um, one thing that's relevant, and, and it'll be relevant as we talk about, you know, one or two other guys here, is what I already said about the numbers. The Pitt already has two defensive ends committed and two defensive tackles committed. And even if you can flex some of the numbers, say one of the DNs could be a D tackle at some point, there's a cap on how many you can take. And I can't see them taking much more than say two of the defensive linemen that we're talking about here today, guys, who are going to be making their announcement sometime soon. So some of that space is going to run out. I mean, say, say and, and it could end up being a timing situation. I think Pitt, I think the coaches and Charlie Partridge in particular, like all of these guys that we're going to talk about here, these defensive ends. And so it might be a first come first serve type of situation. And you could have a four-star defensive end on the outside looking in. Now, you know, a guy like Elias Rudolph, if both of Pitt's spots get filled before he makes his commitment, he's still got Miami and Michigan. So it's, you know, he might not be picking Pitt anyway. You're not going to say that you automatically turn down these guys, but when the numbers are full, the numbers are full. And you can always sort of bend the numbers a little bit and stretch the class this way or that way, take an extra guy here or there. But at some point, there is a ceiling on things. And at some point, you do run out of room. And I think if they get two defensive linemen, two defensive ends, you know, because there's a bunch that are committing here in the next two weeks, I think they'll take the first two they can get out of some of these priority guys who took their official visits. Elias Rudolph on July 3rd, could that be too late? I don't think so. But there's a, at least a possibility that it could be. All right. <clears throat> After that. So that's next Monday. That's Elias Rudolph, the four-star defensive end next Monday. Um, then you go to next Friday, July 7th. And it's four-star wide receiver Nicholas Marsh making his commitment. Marsh is a four-star prospect at River Rouge, uh, Michigan. He's a 6'3", 200-pound wide receiver. Took his official visit to Pitt the first weekend of the month. Then went to Penn State, Kansas, and Michigan State. Announced a top five of Pitt, Penn State, Michigan State, Oregon, and Kansas. Oregon did not get an official visit in there. I don't really think they're a, a contender here. Kansas apparently did really well in the official visit. Not really sure uh, if they did enough. I think it comes down to Pitt, Penn State, and Michigan State. And, and part of what I had heard is that it was coming down to Pitt and Penn State, although he had that last official visit to Michigan State. And that probably, you know, like I say, it's always good to be able to make that final impression. And so we'll see if, you know, I, I think it was going to come down to Pitt and Penn State. We'll see if the Michigan State visit did enough to um, bounce the Panthers or Nittany Lions out of the top two. 
we know Pitt could use another wide receiver in this class, certainly a big time prospect and a big time talent like Nicholas Marsh. Uh, don't have a great feel on that one. You know, I, there are some guys that I have a feel on. I've, I've touched on it a little bit here and there. I certainly will put it on the message boards. All right. We'll probably have a, a recruiting post up later today. Uh, we'll see how the timing works out. If I can get it done in the morning, might have to wait till the afternoon, but a few rundowns on, on some of the thoughts we're sharing here tonight or this morning. And uh, <laughs> depending on when you watch this um, and then a little bit more elaboration with my thoughts on where some of these guys are going, but that's another one to watch next Friday. Not this Friday, next Friday, July 7th, Nicholas Marsh, the four-star wide receiver. And then the next day, Saturday, July 8th, four-star defensive end. Another one of these four-star defensive ends, Malachi Williams. Um, he's at Philadelphia. Uh, a Philadelphia kid, he's Monsignor Bonner High School. He's a four-star prospect, number nine recruit in the state of Pennsylvania, number 17 weak side defensive end in the country. If you remember, Elias Rudolph was number 13, so we're talking about guys that were all kind of right around this same area uh, in, in terms of the rankings, at least. Uh, Williams took two other official visits in the month of June, went to Penn State, went to Syracuse. He's got, you know, when he's committing, it's going to be a top three of those three schools, Pitt, Penn State, and Syracuse. Seems like Penn State probably does want to land him. Pitt, as we said, has these two open defensive end spots. And so you've got Dominic Kirks committing this Friday. You've got Elias Rudolph committing next monday and you've got malachi williams committing um next saturday all right so that's three and then there's one other guy who hasn't announced the commitment date yet but you got to think it's coming at some point in the next week or two and that's sincere edwards four-star defensive end um uh, from uh Wakaiva high school in apopka florida he took one other official visit that was to central florida when he was still committed to central florida after that visit and right before his pit visit he decommitted from central florida and took his pit official visit um we said going into the official visit the pit visit that we felt really good about pitt's chances with edwards still feel really good about his pitt's chances with edwards it's really going to be a matter of you know maybe when he announces and if he announces in the next week or two, this is where these numbers come into play. If he announces in the next week or two, it could eliminate a spot for one of these other guys we're talking about. Let's say Pitt gets Dominic Kirks this Friday and then turns around and you know gets a commitment and announce a commitment announcement from Edwards uh, at some point over the weekend or early next week. Well, or, or let's say over the weekend before Rudolph or Williams have a chance to announce their commitment. That might eliminate their spots anyway. And so it might be a moot point of where they want to go or where they want to announce to because the spots might be filled. Now, is it crazy to turn down four-star defensive ends? Possibly. Uh, but they have their numbers. And uh, they have the guys that they like. And I think they really like Crothers. They really like Juhas. Um, they really like Whittington and, and Brew. And so two more of these guys, whichever two want to commit, that might fill up the class. So let's run over the calendar again real quick. Wednesday, tomorrow, June 28th, Coy Beasley, four-star safety, announcing his commitment. Friday, th two guys, three-star offensive lineman, Maurice Schmoranzer, and uh, four-star defensive end, Dominic Kirks, both committing on Friday, June 30th. Uh, fast forward to Monday, July 3rd, four-star defensive end, Elias Rudolph, is announcing his commitment. Fast forward to Friday, uh, July 7th, four-star wide receiver Nicholas Marsh announcing his commitment. And then the next day, Saturday, July 8th, four-star defensive end Malachi Williams announcing his commitment. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six guys. Plus, as I say, Sincere Edwards hanging out there somewhere, seven guys. Out of those seven recruits, and six of the seven are four-star guys, so we're talking about some high-end prospects here. I think Pitt will get three. Let's say three. Three out of those seven. Which, again, when we're talking about, uh, you know, six out of the seven are four star prospects, um, that's pretty good. You know, because you have a pretty high chance, you know, if you get three at worst, you're adding two more four-star recruits to your class and potentially you're adding three, depending on who those three are. So 
that would be a pretty good group. I mean, obviously you'd like to get five of these guys, you know, but like I said, some of the defensive ends are probably going to be eliminated if two other, two of the others, if two commit, then two of the others or the other two are going to be, you know, out of space, right? So you're not going to get all seven of these guys getting three out of the seven wouldn't be too bad. I think of a, of a way to settle, especially if you take, if you assume that two of the three are defensive ends, that eliminates the other two defensive ends from the seven. So you're talking about really getting three out of five, which is pretty good, pretty good hit rate, I would say. Particularly when you're talking about the caliber of recruits and the level of competition you're going against. You'll notice when I talk about all the top fives that these guys are picking from and, and all the, the schools that they're considering and everything, they were all power five schools. And we're not talking about group of five schools. We're not talking about the FCS or anything like that. We're talking about power five schools. We're talking just reading down the list, Purdue, Wisconsin, Virginia Tech, West Virginia, Miami, Penn State, Michigan State, Oregon, Kansas, Washington, Wisconsin, Penn State, Syracuse, Miami, Michigan. I mean, we're talking about Big Ten schools. You know, we're talking about ACC schools. We're talking about Pac-12 schools being in the mix. This is, this, this is high-level recruiting right here. And over the next two weeks, we'll see how Pitt does with it. So, the June official visits are over, but the uh, the action has not ceased. These next two weeks will definitely be interesting, starting tomorrow with Coy Beasley uh, making his commitment announcement. All right, make sure you like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash panthalaircom. Don't uh, miss anything we do right here at youtube.com slash panthalaircom. And then, of course, uh, stay tuned to the website, panther-lair.com. Pittsburgh.rivals.com, the most comprehensive source of Pitt sports news on the internet. Go check it out, panther Lair. Dot com. Thanks so much for tuning in today. It's been a lot of fun here on a Tuesday. And yeah, hope you have a great day. I hope your week got up to a good start yesterday and hope you have a great Tuesday. We'll be back with you again tomorrow, tomorrow morning right here for the Morning Pit. YouTube.com slash